Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white life gain and drain deck featuring Obsidat, Ghost Council as our commander, voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This 5-mana 5 5-5 5 5 Legendary Spirit Advisor will drain the opponent for 2 and we gain 2 whenever it enters a battlefield, and at the beginning of our end step we may exile Obsidat. If we do, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of our next upkeep, and it also gains haste. So we can essentially flicker our own Obsidat turn after turn, to help drain the opponent for 2 each turn, and it will still gain haste so it can get in for 5 right away. So our deck is built around these life gain and drain synergies, which is the main category in the deck here near the middle. We've got some removal as well, plenty of spot removal spells, a couple sweepers. We've got a bit of ramp to maybe help play Obsidant ahead of schedule and keep making other treasure tokens as well. We've got a few individually powerful cards, including the new Titans, Sun Titan and Grave Titan, are pretty exciting additions for any black or white brawl deck. And then a few ways to double ETB effects with Panharmonicon and Elishnorn, which can also double the damage from Obsidat. And then we've got a few card draw effects as well, with cards like Frexin Arena and Black Market Connections, which we can easily offset with a life gain from Obsidat, so we don't mind paying a bit of life to it. And then Bolas' Citadel, Kaya, more awesome curve toppers if we get to cast them. Some of our life gain payoffs include some creatures that become bigger whenever we gain life. We've got a Janice Pride Mate, as well as a Voice of the Blessed being great examples. Some more of my personal favorites, which of the Moors can also make the opponent sacrifice a creature every turn if we gained life, as well as getting a creature back from our graveyard. So that's another deadly combination with Obsidot if it can stick around for a while. So yeah, that's kind of the brief description of our deck. For those that want a more detailed breakdown, let's start with our removal section, where we've got Source to Plowshares, another must-have in any white commander deck. We've got Cutdown and Fatal Push at one mana. There's Thought Seize for a bit of hand disruption, can also easily pay the two life. We've got Feed the Swarm, can deal with creatures as well as enchantments, also costs us a bit of life. Go for the Throat and Heartless Act as more instant speed, two mana removal and Shieldred's Edict to make the opponent sacrifice a creature, Planeswalker, or potentially a token. We've got the Orcish Bowmasters, still a great addition in any black brawl deck now, and no exception here. Can also potentially double its trigger with a Panharmonicon or Elishnorn, so there's a bit more synergy. We've got the D-Spark and Vanishing Verse as powerful multicolor options. We've got a Loron to deal with artifacts or enchantments. A Murderous Rider deals with creatures or Planeswalkers, and as a 2-3 lifelink can also synergize with the rest of the deck. Good Kaya's Wrath as one of our sweepers, as well as Farewell, which can exile creatures, artifacts, enchantments, and potentially graveyards. And then in our ramp section, we've got Dark Ritual, adding triple black for one turn, so that can potentially play a turn three Obsidot already. We've got a Lotho, which can help us make additional treasure tokens whenever a player casts a second spell, also costs us one life. Got Arcane Signet and Cold Steel Heart. Not playing Mindstone, even though we could, just because Obsidat requires double white, double black. So artifacts that only add colorless mana are not quite as valuable in this deck as they would be otherwise. We've got a File of Galadriel, can also potentially gain more life or draw extra cards if we're empty handed. We've got a Talisman, can tap for colorless, but it also gains one life. So while it's not the best for ramping out Obsidat, if it's our only colorless ramp artifact, it's not a problem, and it can also enable some of our life gain synergies. Celestis is also great here, makes colored mana, and as it switches between day and night, can also gain life, give us some card selection. And then Worn Power Stone, another recent addition, also just too powerful not to include in a lot of decks that aren't playing green. Can make double colorless if we untap with it on the following turn. And then a Solemn can find a Plains or a Swamp when it enters and draws a card when it dies. Then in the Life Gain section, we've got a Janice Welcome alongside Soul Warden and Lunark Veteran at one mana as great enablers. So whenever a creature enters, we'll be able to gain a life. In the case of Soul Warden, also when the opponent plays a creature. Sarah Ascendant, if we reach 30 or more life, turns into a 6 6 flyer with a lifelink. So that's quite a threat if we can enable it early with a Janice Welcome and friends. We've got our Janice Pride Mates picking up a plus one counter whenever we gain life, so that can pick up multiple counters in one turn. Same with the Voice of the Blessed, which is a more powerful option, although it does require double white to cast. There's the Orator, Daxos, and Sadistic Pilgrim, which will also gain life when creatures enter with some additional abilities. 
good Heliod, which will give us a plus one counter whenever we gain life. It's also very good with Obsidat and all the creatures we just covered. Can also turn into a 5-5 five, five indestructible if we have enough devotion to white, and Obsidat already adds two white devotion, so it doesn't take much. Then there's a Black Priest, which will drain the opponent for one whenever we gain life. And then Veto is the more powerful option, since that will drain the opponent for as much as we gain life. So that can also quickly add up. The Aerialist, also similar to the Pride Mate, picks up a plus one counter whenever we gain life on a 2-3 flyer. There's the Patrician, a 1-4 flying lifelink, which will drain the opponent for three if we gained three or more life this turn. So between the one lifelink in the air and the two from Obsidant, we can usually get there. And Kambal will punish the opponent for casting non-creature spells, draining them for two life while gaining two. Then we've got the Faith Mender, doubling our life gain can make it hard for the opponent to outrace us. We've got a Jani Strength of the Pride, making Pride Mate tokens, which are similar to a Jani's Pride Mate, and then can also gain life with the plus one ability. If we ever get to enough life, which in Brawl we need to have 40 or more life, we can also use a zero ability as a powerful board wipe. Shieldred is an individually powerful card, but also has great synergy throughout the deck, gaining us life. And then Exquisite Blood says whenever an opponent loses life, we gain that much life. So that can set up a two-card infinite combo with either Black Priest or Veto, since if our opponent loses life, we gain that much life with Exquisite Blood, which then turns into more life loss with either Black Priest or Veto, which will gain life again, and you can see where this is going. Then there's the Witch of the Moors, as we discussed, can get back creatures as well as make the opponent sacrifice whenever we gain life, end of turn. And then our next section includes a bit more card draw. Ambitious Farmhand draws the planes. The Archivist can draw if the opponent searches their library, so it can punish all the green ramp strategies, especially now with Primeval Titan everywhere. There's Tome of Legends, which is awesome alongside Obsidot, since it will get a page counter whenever our commander enters the battlefield or attacks, which can happen multiple times with Obsidot without any effort, and then we can pay one mana tap, remove a counter to draw a card. There's Inspiring Overseer and Priest, which will draw a card and gain one life when they enter, so they can also enable some of our life gain synergies. We already covered Connections and Phyrexian Arena, which are great card draw engines in a life gain deck. Soren can make 2-3 lifelinking vampires or draw additional cards. There's Bolas the Citadel, which is one of the awesome payoffs if we have a lot of life to work with, can play a bunch of spells off the top for free. And Kaya can drain the opponent for 3, draw additional cards, or exile an opposing creature and turn it into a token. And then we've got a Lingering Souls, also great alongside all the life gain effects, since we'll get to make multiple spirit tokens, which can trigger cards like Soul Warden multiple times. We've got Panharmonicon doubling our ETB effect, especially nice with Obsidot now draining the opponent for 4. Same with Elishnorn, which will also shut down opposing ETB effects. And then a Sun Titan to get back some of our cheaper permanents from the graveyard, also good with fetch lands. And the Grave Titan makes a pair of zombie tokens when it enters or attacks, so both of the titans also very good with Panharmonicon and Elishnorn. And Grave Titan making tokens also synergizes quite well with cards like Lunark Veteran and Soul Warden. And then the mana base has a couple fetch lands which will go well with Sun Titan between Storefront, which also gains one life for some of our life gain synergies, and Fabled Passage, then a bunch more black white dual lands, and then we've got Abandoned Mire and Diganjo, which can be channeled for value, and Castle Lothwain can also be a nice source of card advantage in the more drawn out games. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Emoti, Blue Green Ramp. It's gonna be a tough matchup, although our hand's not bad. We can uh, find a second blank source for Arena. Ascendant can maybe get a couple hits in. Although unlikely to get us to 30 life by itself. Okay, Soul Warden helps. Still looking for a black mana. Opponent's growth spiraling. And we get to play Phyrexian Arena. Goes against our life game plan a little bit. But we still need the card advantage here. The fast would surge, get two more lands. Opponent's not playing any creatures into our Soul Warden. Priest is good. And a veteran, okay. So play veteran play priests and I think we'll be able to get to 30 here to grow Sarah Ascendant. And get in for 7, so that's a pretty fast clock now all of a sudden. Next turn we can play Obsidant. 
And it's going to be a Vorinclex for the opponent. Does block the Sarah Ascendant, which is probably why they went for it. Opponent could still have a counter spell up, but taps out for Incubation Druid. Okay, so yeah, play Obsidat and think attack all out. If her opponent takes six from Ascendant and eats my Soul Warden, that's fine. But her opponent's gonna trade. At 47 life. And Obzadat's gonna come back next turn. Still a couple turns away from Kaya, so hoping to draw something useful off Phyrexian Arena. Emoti cascades into a fight rigging. Pretty good with Incubation Druid, which will now be able to make three mana after they put a counter on it. So that's scary. Opponent just goes for an invasion of Zendikar instead. And then counter on Emoti. So at least Obsidot can still attack past it. Opponent's gonna be at 8 life. So, yeah. We're gonna have to chump Obsidot, and Blight Priest was an awesome pickup. So now play Daxos, play Blight Priest, and that's just gonna drain the opponent to death with all these life gain triggers. Awesome. So yeah, beat the ramp deck and they had a totally functional draw. Just got to see some of our cool life gain synergies. I guess our opponent's still at one, so technically not dead. But next turn we get to drain them with Obsidots. And I don't expect our opponent to gain a ton of life. And there we go, opponent played a creature into our Blind Priest, which will end the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Smeagol, which is gonna tempt the ring and ramp. Our hand leaves a lot to be desired, no black mana. This seems better. Can scry towards maybe a ramp card to try and get Obzidat and play a turn sooner. But uh, for now. Let's see, Lotho seems worth keeping. Gives me a turn two play since we can't play Daxos with our current mana. And then the goal is to get to Citadel as soon as possible. Opponent likely to answer Lotho before it makes any treasure. Okay, so get in for two. And we can play Daxos. Nothing from our opponents. Time for Smeagol. It's gonna be a Black Market Connections, which we can blow up with Loron, so that's perfect. Get in for four. Still hoping to draw some lanes here. If our opponent presents a target for swords, we can play two and plus swords, make a treasure. That would help. And Loran can also draw to give us another shot. So there's Smeagol. And there's a land. Okay, so... Yeah, I think going to plus swords is still reasonable. Lots us attack, makes a treasure. And I'm in favor of drawing with Loran as well. Even though it lets the opponent draw a card too. But we can do that at any point. Same with uh, Tomb of Legends. I guess we do have a Thoughtseize in the deck. We could have potentially drawn and cast here. Opponent replay Smeagol. So we'll draw. And draw again. Okay, so we can play Obsidats or we can play Bolasa Citadel. 
Although, Citadel is better if we haven't played land for the turn yet. So, maybe we prefer playing Obsidots. And gain some life. And then attack all out. Can again draw with Loron if we feel like uh, we want to maybe hit an extra lane drop. Make sure to decline when uh, exiling Obsidat. Easy to misclick, which would be a disaster. It's going to be a nice cool. For opponent's double spells, we get to trigger Lotho. And our opponent gets to ramp. Alright, so yeah, I'm down to draw with Loron. Can also be useful with a Bolasa Citadel in play. Opponent will have to discard to hand size here. They might be keeping up removal for Obsidat. But uh, pretty nice with Tome of Legends. So step one's going to be play Citadel. See what's on top. And then we can draw with Loron and potentially with Tome after playing a land. So we can hopefully keep going. Opponent's going to try and remove Obsidots, I think. That's fine. And cast some free spells here, make a treasure. Exquisite Blood could be effective. Fatal Push. Uh, let's see, opposite out left, so Revolt is enabled. Can clear the Nazgul. Just keep going. Can't quite cut down Smeagol. But uh, I guess I can target my own creature with it, or we can just draw it with uh, Tomb of Legends here. Would have worked out better had we taken out Smeagol first, but can actually attack past Smeagol with our creatures, whereas Nazgul had some profitable blocks. But yeah, our opponent has seen enough. They're uh, likely gonna just die this turn, and then we can cast a lot more free spells in the process. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Nahiri, Forged in Fury, Red-White Equipment. This hand is not the best for the matchup. Kaya's Wrath could be helpful, but... Opponent's also just playing a lot of artifacts that don't die to it. So I think I'm looking for something a little different. Okay, this hand has some nice tools, but it seems a bit too slow with two six drops and a seven drop. Don't think I'm going to survive that long to deploy everything. So I'll have to go to six. This is better. And then probably ditch a Johnny's Welcome. At least Farmhand can find an extra land. Signet helps us ramp. Can get an early Obsidot down and then go for the throat to clear Nahiri. And Jani could also be pretty nice, especially if we play turn 3 off Arcane Signet. Beetle to discount their artifacts, can take it out with go for the throat. Can, however, play Signet into Sarah Ascendant. Gonna be a cleaver for three mana. Getting the discount from Beetle. So now we can clear it and hit them with the Sarah Ascendance. Since we're gonna want to get rid of the equipped creature before they can deploy Nahiri. Opponent gets a card from the spellbook. Next turn we get to play Obsidots. They can already play Nahiri, but they don't have any equipped creatures to enable her ability. This could also be a matchup where we want to keep Opposite out on defense for a turn or two before sending it to exile. If we need to hold off an attack, especially to protect the Jani. Lizard Blades for one mana, that's a bargain. 
And a halberd. Heartless Act could take out Nahiri. But for now, let's just play Obsidots. And then I'll keep it back. Don't expect the opponent's deck to have a lot of answers for it. Bonecrusher kills Ascendant. And they're gonna equip the Beetle onto a creature that was already equipped, so it's not really helping with Nahiri. So yeah, play a Johnny, and then castles untapped thanks to Godless Shrine. Can make a token. So I am considering attacking with Obsidot now, and then exiling it, since we have Heartless Act for removal. Can maybe jump with a Farmhand. Mirror Crusader with protection from black, that's pretty effective here. So that's the card they got from the Cleaver. And a color. Okay. So no Nahiri to worry about. And I guess we'll uh, take it out here. Obsidant's back. Opponent does have five power worth of first strikers available here. So that's a bit concerning. We can transform farmhands and then minus a Johnny again. Our true strength. And then Archivist we can flash in at instant speed. Now here he doesn't actually search to enable the Archivist, but uh, yeah I guess we could also activate Castle if we'd like. Find Vito. Vito's good. So now I'll pass. Still send Obsidants on a vacation. And then next turn will trigger Vito as well as the two Pride Mate tokens. Sword of Forge and Frontier for free. Getting triple discount from Foundry Beetle, I guess. Mirren Crusader now has Death Touch and Life Link, as well as protection from black and from green. And now protection from red and green as well. So if I chump it and they kill my blocker, they only gain 4 life instead of 8 since it dies with first strike damage and they don't apply regular damage afterwards. That's important. So I think if I just chump like so, opponent gains 4 up to 14. Next turn we could do a lot of damage with Vito and a Jani. Find an orator as well, which we can deploy. And then plus a Jani. That's seven life. Vito and drains for seven, points at two, can still transform farmhand. And attack all out, and that should do it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, so close game here against the red-white equipment deck, seeing some more of our life gain synergies. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Vorinclex, which does line up pretty favorably against our 5-5, but uh, we've got some good tools for the matchup, including turn 1 Thoughtseize, which I don't think I can resist. See what they're working with. Herbalist can put lands in play, Uprising draws, Dry to play extra lands, and then Voice of Hunger eventually. Might want to shut off the card draw. Voice of Hunger is still pretty far. And then uh, can't really deny them of uh, keeping a creature that puts additional lands in play. Can eventually wipe them up with Kaya's Wrath. Still getting a Swamp, even though we've got some double white cards we won't be able to cast. Likely going for Phyrexian Arena. And uh, Dryad. Okay, 
So next turn opponent can play Vorinclex, which runs right into Archaea's Wrath, although they will be able to deploy a couple of those extra lines already, which makes it easy to redeploy Vorinclex. So they're not going to be too far from playing Voice of Hunger, but I don't think I can wait to Kaya's Wrath. Just gonna hope to find another removal spell. I guess I could play Solemn, so what happens? Then we cast Kaya's Wrath afterwards. Because otherwise we don't have an answer lined up for the Voice of Hunger. It will cost us two turns, basically, since all our lands will be tapped. Alright, opponent runs out another Vorinclex. They've got all three. So we can definitely chump here. Fall to eight. And a Swords to Plowshares, that's an excellent draw, so is Dark Ritual. So we can Kaya's Wrath, keep up Swords to answer Vorinclex. And then we should be in the clear. I'll keep Dark Ritual to ramp out Bolas of Citadel, perhaps. And then Obsidant can offset the life loss from Phyrexian Arena. There's Voice of Hunger, and only need to make one mana here. That's answered. And now we've got more time to get out of this. Don't have a lot of life to work with, so Citadel's a little sketchy. So probably want to get Obsidant going first. And then can maybe a Ritual out or Aerialist as well. That seems worth it. Just get a board presence going. Because their opponent will be able to replay their commander here. Which can block Aerialists, but nope. It's going to be a Thorn Mammoth killing Aerialist. That's painful. And it also blocks opposite dot. Not what we wanted to see. Bowmasters can finish off Thorn Mammoth, so I could attack with Obsidant if I wanted to. I guess it's worth a shot. And if our opponent takes it, that's fine. Could have kind of tempted them to block by playing Exquisite Blood first. We'll just have to play it this way. Okay, so Panharmonicon cost me 4 life, down to 5. So then I would be dead to the Thorn Mammoth next turn, so that doesn't work. Okay, just pass it back. Can still flash in the Bowmasters. But these big trampley creatures are scary. Need to find another removal spell or two. Druid class, sure. I guess that can also make a hasty land next turn, although at least it doesn't trample. So we'll flash in the Bowmasters. I'll land on top. And I go for the throat, that's convenient. So I can go for the Throat Vorinclex and then play Exquisite Blood to gain a bunch of life back after attacking. And then Loran can blow up the Druid class. So let's attack first. Gain 7. And then now I could still play Farmhand. And then I think the plan is to lure on on Druid class. 
over Panharmonicon. Soul Warden on top, that pays for itself. Okay. So we could still die if our opponent can clear enough of our blockers. Although we're close to winning the game with Bolas of Citadel as well here. Opponent can replay Vorinclex, fight one of our creatures, attack with Thorn Mammoth. Still gonna lose one from Phyrexian Arena. Their opponent's gonna start by attacking. I have to jump with at least one creature. Let's say Loron, since Farmhand can turn into a Life Linker. And then I fall to two life after opponent plays Vorinclex. Since we would also gain one off Soul Warden. Augur of Autumn. Okay. They don't have Coven enabled, but they have a Lotus Cobra. So that's another fight. Opposite Art will come back, drain them for two. So the game's not over yet. Bowmaster's down. Land of the top. But that should be it for now. Okay. Signet on top. That's gonna cost me two life. But uh, yeah, I think I still have to go for it. Hope to find some more goodies. A land. And another land. Not what we wanted to see at all. So if I attack with Obsidats, opponent's probably jumping to deny the life gain. I don't even have Coven enabled. So I think we're just dead here now. I guess if I leave Obzidat back on defense, what happens? Opponent just fights it when they play Vorinclex with the Thorn Mammoth, so... Still gonna trample over everything. So I have to attack, hope they take it, so I gain some life back. Opponent jumps. Play Panharmonicon, but then... Yeah, we should be dead on board here. Yeah, a few too many lands near the end. Was definitely an exciting back and forth. Thorn Mammoth was a huge top deck, killing the Aerialist and then kind of uh, killing everything else. Tribute to the World Tree. They can still play their commander. Not that they really needed it, but they don't know we have all lands in hand. Can hope they play around a Wandering Emperor, but I doubt it. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Tokasia, Dig Side Mentor, Self Mill deck. And our hand's decent. Turn 1 Veteran helps grow Pride Mate. Hope to pick up a 3 drop. And I guess I'll play the plane since we might draw Sarah's Ascendant, which wants us to have a higher life total. Turn to Signets. Murderous Rider can answer to Keisha. So we picked up our 3 drop. Alright. Edict also works. But I don't mind casting the three mana removal here. It's more mana efficient. A Micromancer can find a one mana spell. Could be a source to plowshares. Could be a flicker effect. Ephemerate makes sense. And it could flicker Micromancer right away. If not, I may want to keep up Shielder's Edict. Although it's going to be awkward if our opponent doesn't go for the Ephemerate. 
And uh, yeah, I don't have a great attack if I want to keep up Edict. So just play a tap plan and pass. Hope they go for it. But we kind of gave up that we have removal by not casting Murder Strider, so I'm surprised they're still going for it here. So sacrifice a non-token creature. And now Ephemerate Fizzles, so they also don't get to rebound it. Alright, so where were we? I guess it's time to play Obsidots. Can double spell to play around a counter spell, so may as well go for it. That resolves. So that's going to grow Pride Mate twice. Hope they don't have a Wandering Emperor. Maybe I should not attack with a Veteran, just a Pride Mate. It's going to be a Siphoner instead. Get back Ephemerates. Okay. So they can Chump and Flicker. And we'll send Opposite Ant on a vacation. Next turn, just go for Grave Titan. Pretty good with Veteran. Gaining life multiple times for Pride Mate. So their opponent's got a annoying loop here. Siphoner plus Ephemerate. We'll need to find some instant speed removal. Pride Mate grows and there's a Sword to Plowshares, so I got my wish. So both large creatures get to attack if they chump an ephemerate, will swords in response. And then we can still play Solemn, which I guess I could play first. Although on the off chance they don't chump, I can just play Grave Titan. Double chump? Okay. So we'll exile that in response. And can still play it solemn. And I'll just fetch now. Reason not to fetch is if we want to enable revolt for a fatal push, but with Obsidant that's usually not too difficult. Next turn we can play Grave Titan at long last. Yorion doesn't have anything to flicker. And Incubation Druid. Alright, so this Pride Mate is gonna get there eventually. Incubation Druid's probably getting thrown under the bus. Panharmonicon also very nice with all these ETB effects, but I still want to just play Grave Titan here. Applies more pressure. And then I may just want to attack all out. If they eat Veteran with Yorion, then they're taking 5 from Obsidat. And Incubation Druid's jumping all day. Alright, I guess they might have a flicker effect here, Essence Flux. Fair enough. So they get to flicker incubation druids, but we still got to get in with a Lunar Veteran. Opponents just uh, working with their one top deck. And a finale of devastation, that's a good one. X equals 7, what can they get? Probably nothing to end the game, but they can certainly try to stabilize the board here. Oof, Elish Norn. Yep, that'll do it. Everything gets minus two, minus two, so Solemn dies on the spot. And now Grave Titan doesn't look so hot anymore. Can still maybe get there with Obsidot triggers. Grave Titan also has Death Touch, so that helps. Okay, so yeah, play Welcome. We'll still get to trigger it off Grave Titan. And then Obsidant doesn't have a good attack. But the rest can get in there. Pride 
Divine Mate 1616, so that's getting trumped by Yorion. And I suppose I can play Murder Strider. Okay, so next turn we drain for four with Panharmonicon. The Reflector Mage can send Pride Mate packing, so that's reset. And now if we play it, it's gonna die instantly to Elishnorn. Okay. They can trade Incubation Druid for Grave Titan. So we just have to get there with Obsidot, pretty much. Or draw something relevant. At least we're not dying anytime soon. Probably not worth it to trade to Grave Titan for Reflector Mage. So let's just pass it back. And hope that Obsidot can cross the finish line next turn. And actually should have attacked with Obsidot, because if our opponent blocks, then we just replay it and drain the opponent for four, so we just end the game a turn sooner than having to wait for next turn. But yeah, opponent didn't draw anything relevant, and they explode. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Omnath, a Locus of all three-color deck, or multicolor in general. Our hand's missing black mana, otherwise turn two shield root could be pretty fun. Don't think we can risk it, really. This is better. Got some early interaction. Tomb for card draw, Celestus for ramp, can maybe set up turn four Obsidots, which is pretty nice with Tome of Legends. So, very solid hand. Can even Fatal Push after playing Celestus, or maybe draw with Tome after playing Celestus. If our opponent plays a Mana Elf, we can likely kill it with a Bowmasters. Just play the Tomb. Cold Steel Heart. And next turn we can play Obsidat. It's gonna be a Scramp Gorger, dice to Fatal Push. Seems more relevant than drawing with Tome right now. Although I may regret it if our opponent destroys my Tome. So get our commander going. And next turn Patrician could also be pretty nice. Opponent passes, switches to Knight. So Celestis also triggers. Which will help enable Patrician. And what don't we need? Maybe Bowmasters, since we haven't seen any small creatures yet. Okay, so draw with Tome. And then I can still play Signets and Patrician. Yeah, Tome's awesome with Obsidots, definitely a must have. Opponent's already down to 13. Possible that they're missing a color. No red mana spotted yet. Command tower will help. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, they're already too far behind. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Jury, a black red a sacrifice deck. My hand leaves a lot to be desired. No black mana. This is better. Turn one, a Janice welcome. Celestis on three, and then we've got some life gain to enable Witch of the Moors. Could now play a Lotho as well. Although it doesn't seem long for the world. It's gonna be a tragic slip. A relatively recent addition on Arena. Blood Tithe Harvester on two. And we could Celestis and play Ascendant. Don't really mind if it dies, since Witch can eventually get it back. With the Janice Welcome, a great way to enable it. Our opponent sacrificing a creature with Witch does synergize with her commander in a way, but I uh, don't really mind. 
We're at 27. If we get to 30, Ascendant grows and our opponents got a Liliana as well. So yeah, they could potentially use Liliana to get rid of the Witch, but now they minused already. Did not draw the land, unfortunately, but can play a Jani, make a token, which will immediately grow up to a 3-3, so it doesn't die to Harvester. Although, can imagine our opponent will have some other removal at the ready. If we don't draw land for several turns, Liliana can make us discard the Witch, which would be unfortunate. Take the trade. And a Thirst kicked takes care of a Jani. Alright, please draw an untapped land. I'm tired of your secrets. Just a Priest. Alright, that replaces itself so we don't have to discard the Witch necessarily. So we can discard File, try to hang on to which of the Moors. Prosper is a good one. Can provide additional card advantage. And I'm stubbornly going to hang on to which of the Moors since drawing a land for it would be awesome. Heliod instead. Doesn't quite do anything here. So I think we just pass and then get to trigger Celestis. Okay. So now I'm gonna have to discard land potentially, unless they minus two. And Mishra's next. And Liliana's gonna minus. Alright. So we get to play Witch. Gets around the ward ability. A lingering Souls, so we don't mind discarding either. Opponent reading Witch of the Moors. And what do we return? I guess Priest of Ancient Lores, good value. And our opponent sacrifices Prosper. So if they can't answer the Witch, it's quickly gonna take over here. They've got two cards left. Fable, that's fine. And a Playcrafter, that's not as fine. So down goes the Witch. Discard Lingering Souls. I'm tired of your secrets. And then I think we hang on to Priest, which we can play alongside Lingering Souls flashback. Pride Mates could also be pretty nice. So let's say we go Pride Mate plus Priest. Hope to draw land, so I'm empty-handed. And then I can sack Priest to Liliana. Perfect. Alright, so we've got a large blocker. Next turn we can finally play Obsidat. Have yet to see the Master in play. There it is. Shaman attacks, we'll block. And the village rides, we'll sacrifice it anyway. Kalein's next. Yuri keeps growing. And a fatal grudge. Makes me sacrifice Celestis. Now a 5-5. Five five. And when it dies, deals damage equal to its power to any target. So we can play Obsidant, cannot flash back souls because Celestis is gone. But we'll get our commander going. So if we attack with Pride Mate, they can jump with Yuri, finish off Obsidant. Seems acceptable. If they jump, kill Priests. Then they can minus Liliana next turn successfully, but that seems reasonable too. 
or they can just finish off Pride Mate. Okay, we'll send Opposite Aunt on a vacation. And then we'll need to find a solution for this Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Although for now, only legendary creatures in play. They can copy the token from Bastion. But uh, it feels like we should have better top decks at this point in the game. And Obsidant's gonna try and take over now. Cut down Answer's Reflection will make me sack a permanent. But that's alright. Okay, maybe sack a token from Lingering Souls. Opponent's gonna jump with a 1 1 most likely. I guess I could attack with Priest as well. Okay, so damage happens. Don't need to cut down Reflection just yet, can wait for them to take up Liliana perhaps. The downside of waiting is if our opponent found another instant to sacrifice a creature and draw with it. Goes for Yuri. That happens. And Liliana could minus as well. And they're gonna just clear a token. That happens. One of your friends has to leave. Mishra attacks, so does Reflection. Alright, I guess we'll kill the Reflection now. And then maybe just sacrifice a land. Although next turn we'll get back Obsidant, can attack Liliana. And uh, if they want to chump with Yuri, that's fine. I think we're fine to just sack the token. Only downside is if I draw another relevant creature that could die to Liliana's minus. It's gonna be a temple, so let's attack. Do we finally defeat Liliana? Not yet. Play Temple and keep something juicy on top. My Gancho doesn't really count. Alright, so... Switches to Knight, but Celestis is gone. Six mana to replay Yuri. They're gonna unearth Mindstone to draw instead. So they may not plus Liliana anymore. And a Feed the Swarm kills a Janice Welcome, that's fine. So Mishra could stay back to protect Liliana. Seems to be their plan. Nope. So, not sure why they plus Liliana then. Liliana finally dealt with. And I guess there's no downside to playing the land here. So we haven't top decked anything too exciting in a while. There's a few cards I can think of. Bolasa Citadel, other big card draw effects. Vanishing Verse can exile the Bastion, although it does still have Ward. Making me sack a permanent. Opponent's gonna take five. Opposite odds definitely helps us win the race. Opponent passes, so they're maybe planning to double block. I think I still wait on casting Vanishing Verse. Just a land. Yeah, let's attack. Opponent double blocks. 
take the trade, and then we can Vanishing Verse Bastion without having to pay ward. Opponent had an Undying Malice. Alright, so let that happen, and then as Mishra's gone for a brief second, we can Vanishing Verse. So move to Command Zone. And then now we'll Vanishing Verse. And then we should still be able to replay opposite dots. So now both creatures are 5-5s. Five but we've got a life total advantage. So I don't think our opponent's attacking. Phase Breaker, I guess, is potentially an incentive to attack. To make treasure, turn it into card advantage. Alright, Shieldred's Edict, perfect answer here. Can make the opponent sacrifice a creature, gets around ward. And then I don't have to force the trade since we are still draining the opponents and I won't be able to replay opposite dots if it trades right now, whereas next turn I might be able to. So we're just going to pass. Opponent can now replay Yuri for 8 mana. But they're still between a rock and a hard place. Opposite dance is back. And Soren's a nice draw. So, what's our plan? Soren can just draw. Can make a vampire. Can force a trade for Mishra. And then just replay opposite dots. Maybe that's still the best play. Opponent has to at least jump with Yuri. They're gonna trade. And replay off the dot. Just enough mana. Okay. Opponent's got one top deck here to try and save them. It's gonna be Obnixilus with casualty. Alright, so they get to make a few chum blockers. Deal some damage on the way out. But now the board's a lot more stable to leverage Sorin. Opponent still has to chum block with the 1 1 token. But I guess I can maybe find a removal spell to just win the game. No cost is too great. Kaya's not bad. I think we're one mana short of casting it here. But next turn it'll do. Okay. Opponent can make another 1-1 one, one to block. If they don't draw anything else relevant. But then they're going to be facing Kaya, draining them for three, and that's just too much for them to handle. Sweet. So very grindy game here against the Black Rat Sacrifice deck. But yeah, the Black White Life Gain and Drain eventually got there. And uh, even got to see our Witch of the Moors for a brief moment, where it was pretty effective. Immediately bringing back a creature and making the opponent sacrifice. So that's another one of those exciting cards if you can keep it around for a while. So yeah, quite pleased with how our Obsidot deck turned out. It's a deck that you can build in a few different ways. You can go for a more controlling approach and then mainly use Obsidot as a win condition. Or you can go for more life gain synergies, which is what I chose to do here, which I think is also pretty interesting and maybe a bit different from other black-white decks that tend to be pretty controlling. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.